Great. I think that brings us to the last step, conclusions and interpretations. So if I was to conclude on the full model, and by the full model I mean the model that had all three predictors in it, so this model here, I would need my p-values. Let's see if I can bring this over there. My statistical conclusion. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do it. I'm going to give you a description of what to do, and I want you guys to go away and give it a go for yourself. So your statistical conclusion now needs to follow the exact same pattern that we did last week, the same as your real world, but now you would first talk about research. So you'd say the chance of obtaining a t of 1.87 on 20 degrees of freedom, if the null hypothesis is true, is 0.077% of a chance, or, or is 7.7% um, of a chance, sorry. And this is greater than our definition of sufficiently unlikely, which is 5%, therefore it's a non-significant result. Further building has a T of this, further innovation has a T of this, and go through and interpret all three. Then give you a real world explanation. Therefore, there is evidence to suggest that a one unit increase in innovativeness produces a statistically significant increase in ratings of 6.70 on average, provide your confidence intervals. However, there is no evidence to suggest the number of hours spent doing research or building are uh, predictive of ratings, controlling for the other variables in the model. So it's important to put controlling for the other IVs after each of your interpretations. So if it was for this, where we have three predictors, I'd expect to see controlling for the other IVs after each of your statistical conclusions, but also after each of your real-world conclusions. If you wanted to, you could also do the same here, and you simply say, after removing um, the number of hours spent building, the t-statistic for research becomes 2.35 on 21 degrees of freedom, and the chance of obtaining this if the null hypothesis is true is 2.9% of a chance, this is less than our definition of sufficiently unlikely, which is 5%, and continue on from there. And again, I would still be interpreting both of these, and still saying controlling for the level of innovativeness, or when interpreting innovativeness, controlling for the level of research. All right, that brings us to the end of multiple regression. I know it doesn't seem like there was much more than what we did in simple linear, but really they're the same thing. It's just extending a little bit more. That's all. All right, I'll see you all next week when we move into a very different kind of analysis.